Welcome to Thoughts on the Market. I'm Graham Secker, head of Morgan Stanley's European and UK equity strategy team. Along with my colleagues, bringing you a variety of perspectives, I'll be talking about our positive view on European equities and share some key themes for investors to watch for the second half of this year. It's Tuesday, May the 18th at 2pm in London. This week, we, along with the rest of the Morgan Stanley macro team, have published our mid-year outlook reports, where we put our collective heads together to map out the likely path for economies and markets over the next 6-12 to months. As part of this process, I took a step back to look at what we wrote in the same report from last May. Back then, we titled our outlook European Renaissance in the context of the EU Recovery Fund that had just been proposed. At first glance, it's hard to argue that this new programme has generated much enthusiasm for the region from global investors. Client conversations on the topic are few and far between. European fund flows remain very low relative to elsewhere, and global hedge funds appear to have further reduced their exposure to the region over the last year. However, in that context, it is perhaps even more impressive that Europe has actually been the best performing region across global equities in dollar terms since the initial proposal was announced last May. In my last podcast, I laid out a number of reasons why we think Europe can outperform global equity markets this year. If anything, our conviction levels have risen further since then. The region's vaccination program has accelerated. We have raised our 2021 earnings growth forecast from 30% to 40%, and our bond strategists now forecast German bond yields to reach 0% in 2022. This last point is important, as over the last five years, European equities have exhibited the highest positive correlation to higher bond yields and rising inflation trends more generally, i.e. Europe tends to outperform other regions when these indicators are going up. And we think the end of negative bond yields across the region will be a powerful signal that things are beginning to return to a degree of normality. This backdrop also dictates our investment preferences within Europe. In particular, we think an environment of strong nominal growth, higher inflation and rising bond yields should be supportive to value stocks and weigh on more expensive quality and growth names. Although we have seen solid outperformance from value stocks year to date, a decade of prior underperformance means that their relative valuations still look depressed and investor positioning structurally low. Consistent with this backdrop, we continue to like commodity and financial stocks in Europe, that is, energy and mining companies, banks and insurers. All enjoy robust earnings momentum, low valuations, and are likely to benefit most from the macro backdrop we envisage. They are also less exposed to the risk that higher raw material costs start squeezing profit margins in other areas of the market soon. At the country level, we prefer the UK and Italy. The UK has lagged the global value rally so far and relative valuations remain close to record lows. However, it offers 65% earnings growth this year given its heavy exposure to commodities and financials and also the prospects of a sharp rebound in the UK economy. Italy also looks very cheap versus the rest of the Eurozone, yet it should be the biggest beneficiary of the EU recovery fund. Think an additional 2% boost to GDP for each of the next five years. And it is also nicely geared into our positive view on financials. So, in summary, we think now is the ideal time for global investors to consider increasing their exposure to European equities, and we particularly like commodity and financial stocks and think Italy and the UK are the most attractive markets at this time. Thanks for listening. If you enjoy the show, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and share thoughts on the market with a friend or colleague today. The preceding content is informational only and based on information available when created. It is not an offer or a solicitation, nor is it tax or legal advice. It does not consider your financial circumstances and objectives and may not be suitable for you. 